Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be going through the remodeling of the heart that can occur in both physiological and pathological processes. Now this diagram that I have here, sorry it's a little bit blurry, but I think if you know this particular diagram then you're basically covered on the various different processes that occur when the heart goes undergoes various changes in its muscle structure. So let's get started. Firstly, at the top here, we have the normal heart. And the first thing that you can see or the first thing that you observe is that the right ventricle is thinner than the left ventricle. And that makes sense. The right ventricle is only responsible for pumping blood in the pulmonary circulation, whilst the left ventricle is responsible for pumping blood in the systemic circulation. So to allow for a greater blood pressure, we obviously need a thicker heart wall, so more myocytes on the left ventricular side to ensure that we deliver a greater force to actually allow that blood to flow around the body. So that's the normal scenario. Firstly, I'm going to be talking about physiological hypertrophy, which is the heart that is on the bottom right corner. So physiological hypertrophy, how does that occur? Well, as you can see on the right side here, the precipitating factors can include chronic exercise and pregnancy. And that makes sense because in chronic exercise and pregnancy, essentially, A, in chronic exercise, you're either required to pump more blood around the body in a shorter period of time due to the increased workload that is required by the muscles, or during pregnancy, because you have a growing fetus and there is an extra fetal circulation as well as the maternal circulation, you require a greater pumping action of the heart to deliver blood to the fetus as well. So the features of physiological hypertrophy include an increased myocyte length, and this increased myocyte length occurs to a greater extent, denoted by this arrow here, than an increase in myocyte width. So if, the, if we say, for example, the myocyte looks like this with a nucleus in the middle and striations, then after it undergoes physiological hypertrophy, its width will change, will increase, but the length will increase to much greater extent, which means that the myocyte will look something like this. As this is a physiological process as opposed to a pathological process, there will be no fibrosis. So there's no actual damage occurring to the myocardial tissue. It's simply just increasing in its size. Furthermore, there is no cardiac dysfunction. So there's going to be no problems with stroke volume, heart rate, or any other cardiac feature that may define cardiac output and other organic features of the heart. Essentially, it's a normal heart, just with a greater pumping capacity. And that's why, as denoted by these arrows here, you can have physiological hypertrophy occur, but if a particular stimulus is stopped, then the heart can return back to normal. So in this case, in the case of pregnancy, after the woman has given birth, then the heart will return from being a hypertrophied heart back to a normal heart. And say, for example, if you're training for a marathon, you complete that marathon and then you stop exercising, then after that chronic exercise, your heart will return to being a normal size as opposed to being increased in size. So that's what can happen normally. If we look at the middle picture here, we can see a pathological hypertrophy. And this usually occurs in chronic hypertension, so hypertension that's been occurring for a long time, or aortic valve stenosis. And this is when there is hypertrophy usually of the left ventricle. Chronic hypertension can cause hypertrophy of the left ventricle because the left ventricle now has to pump against a greater force in the systemic circulation. It essentially has to pump more blood or a faster rate of blood with time, which means that the ventricle hypertrophies to compensate for this. This also occurs in aortic valve stenosis because if the aortic valve, which is the valve that uh, 
allows for the outlet of blood into the systemic circulation, if that is stenosed or is unable to open properly, then the left ventricle will hypertrophy as it, as it wants to allow for more blood to flow out of the heart. So it increases in size to increase the contractility. As this process is pathological as opposed to physiological, there is fibrosis involved. So this means that there is cardiac dysfunction and there is some damage occurring to the heart. Now, as you can see in this case, pathological hypertrophy can allow for two different outcomes. As we all know, a normal heart can firstly allow for pathological hypertrophy occur. However, if the pathological hypertrophy is identified in its earliest stages, then we can see some improvement and potentially the heart can go back to its state of being a normal heart. However, this is very rare, and that's why this particular situation is represented by a dotted arrow. In terms of the changes that occur to separate cells within the heart, we can see here that the myocyte length actually increases to a smaller extent as opposed to the myocyte width. So once again, if we have a normal cardiac cell here, which is of course striated, if it undergoes pathological hypertrophy, then it will increase in length. However, the width of that particular myocyte will increase to a much greater extent, which means that the cell will look th something like that. Now, pathological hypertrophy can result in cardiac dilation, and the main discriminatory thing between cardiac dilation and pathological hypertrophy is whether there is a change in the ejection fraction and this is denoted by this EF preserved and EF low at the bottom. The ejection fraction which is the ratio between the amount of blood pumped out of the heart over the diastolic volume which is the amount of blood that is in the heart before pumping occurs this is preserved in pathological hypertrophy because there is no actual pathology in the pumping action of the heart. The heart is thicker than usual and is able to pump at a greater strength. So there's nothing wrong with the actual ability for it to allow for blood to leave it. The only real thing wrong with the heart in this scenario is its actual filling. Because as you can see, the lumen size of a pathologically hypertrophied heart is smaller than a normal heart, which means that with each diastolic section of the cardiac cycle, there is less blood being pumped into the heart, which means that the heart has to work harder either way. When this ejection fraction between, between the cardiac dilation stage and the pathological hypertrophy stage changes, we can see that it decreases to an extent that it becomes below 50%. And if it's below 50%, then we say that depending on whichever side of the heart is affected, that the person has either gone right-sided or left-sided heart failure. And in this case, this is systolic heart failure because the ejection fraction is less than 50%. In cardiac dilation, as you can see, there is no return road. Once the normal heart undergoes cardiac dilation, there is no way that it can return to it being a normal heart. So this is considered to be permanent damage. And as you can see, a cardiac dilation stage can occur due to a myocardial infarction. And that makes sense because if there is death of myocytes within the myocardium, then there's going to be a replacement of those dead cells by fibrosis and fibrotic tissue is a lot thinner than myocardial tissue, which means that the heart will dilate. Furthermore, since the fibrotic tissue is not as contractile as the myocardial tissue and as it's not conductile, the heart won't be able to pump at a rate that is similar to myocardial tissue meaning that it dilates instead to try to compensate for an increase in blood volume coming into the heart. 
So looking at the features of cardiac dilation, we can see that the myocyte length increases to a much greater extent than the myocyte width. Once again, if we have a normal myocardial cell with its striations, if it undergoes cardiac dilation, then its width will increase, but its myocyte length will increase to a much greater extent. And this makes sense because if we imagine the heart has been dilated, then essentially the myocytes are being stretched and allowing for a greater volume of blood to enter the heart. Now, as seen with any case of myocardial infarction, there is going to be extensive fibrosis because the heart is a permanent tissue which cannot heal. And after extensive fibrosis, there is a loss of two main features. Conductivity, which means that the heart is unable to allow for the propagation of electrical impulses within itself, and a loss of contractility, which is as fibrotic tissue is quite rigid, it's unable to pump blood as effectively as myocardial tissue. And something that makes a lot of sense once again is that there is advanced cardiac dysfunction. So this progression from no cardiac dysfunction to a possible cardiac dysfunction as seen in chronic hypertension in pathological hypertrophy to advanced cardiac dysfunction is present. And it shows that cardiac dilation is the most serious of all remodeling processes that occur within the heart. So in review, we firstly looked at physiological hypertrophy, which is when myocyte length increases to a greater extent than myocyte width. But as this is a process that occurs normally with chronic exercise or pregnancy, there is no fibrosis or cardiac dysfunction. With pathological hypertrophy, this can be caused by either chronic hypertension or aortic valve stenosis, which can essentially cause an increase in the size of the heart, but a decrease in the size of the lumen. This is characterized by an increase in myocyte width, but there is a decreased extent of myocyte length increase, and there may be some cardiac dis dysfunction with fibrosis present. Cardiac dilation is the final stage and the most dangerous stage, which can be caused by a myocardial infarction, and it occurs histologically with myocyte length being much greater than myocyte width. There is extensive fibrosis, obviously as a myocardial infarction has occurred or any other highly serious cardiac condition has occurred, there is myocyte death and there is advanced cardiac dysfunction which is characterized by a low ejection fraction and if that ejection fraction is below 50% we say that systolic heart failure is present as opposed to ejection fraction being preserved in chronic hypertension with pathological hypertrophy. So I hope all of this has made sense today. Thanks for watching.